So I've had a chance to play with the Hero 12. In summary, it's a Hero 11 Professional Edition, and you won't regret buying it. If you want to see the real or the short that I created, there's a link in the description, which goes through all the features. However, this video is just to look at some of the things that are important to me. Hey, I'm Rob, and I want to talk to you about the Hero 12 and the Mod 2.0. So I know it can be hard to trust someone who's been gifted a camera. One second. Who is it? Come in. Hi. Oh, it's for me? <clears throat> Forgetting something? Bang. Maybe a good review of that one. Where were we? Oh yeah, the Hero 12. So in this video, I want to sort of give you my opinion whether you should buy the camera or not. It's things I like, things I don't like about it. And I also want to show you some of the things that are kind of top of mind for me. So the log, GP log. Is it good? How does it look? Then there's the new Max Lens Mod 2.0. Should you buy it, etc. So if you press for time, uh, should you buy the Hero 12? Yes. So I think since Hero 10, the GoPros are pretty, pretty stable. So really you can sort of focus now on just the features and battery life and that sort of stuff. And so in that regards, having the log added, having the HDR if you want to use it, having the stability and all the improvements that GoPro usually pack in means that it's a logical upgrade if you were going to buy GoPro anyway. So I think the only people who might be disappointed would be people who rely on the GPS for telemetry. So if I'm going anywhere to do a, a video job, it's going to involve cars, FPV drones, there's going to be GoPros, multiple GoPros in the bag. And that's where the log profiles come in. If it is a production, maybe you have mixed cameras, you want to sort of color grade them all together. And in the past, maybe you weren't satisfied with the flat profiles, so we actually do that. So now we have the GP log. So in the quick testing I did, it was pretty good. Uh, I did have some issues exposing it manually versus letting it do it automatically. It's probably some sort of bug that's gonna get fixed in firmware. But in my very quick testing, trying to match it against Vlog and having a bit of a play, it seemed to work well for me. I'm sure it can only improve over time and the people who need it will be very appreciative that that's included. Uh, the lens mod for me actually was something that I learnt to love. I didn't think I was going to use it very much and when I was sort of testing it I realised that it's extremely useful, especially if you are doing POV sort of situations. You can't go wrong when you want to show more of what you're doing. And for the people who are always wishing their GoPros were just that little bit wider, I think this is going to be something that you can take advantage of. And yes, I did shove it underwater just to have a bit of a look. Uh, you can sort of pause this and go back and forth to have a look at how close that step is underwater. Of course, I'm not sure if the lens mod 2 is supposed to go underwater, but there's a test anyway. So, as you can probably see, I have uh, Galaxy Buds on. And I started the recording by voice command. And I started the recording by voice command. The Bluetooth audio is not really working properly as far as the voice commands go. I had a hit and miss response with it. But I'll list up on the screen. I think this is laying the groundwork for some pretty amazing stuff in the future. I'm not the type of person who likes to complain about things without having solutions. For FPV drones, any sort of vibration movement is actually a big issue. I actually created these 3D uh, printed lugs that can actually go on there and actually stop any sort of movement um, and add a bit of resistance to avoid problems when flying. So there are always small things you can do to improve. In this particular case, the Max Lens Mod 2 is actually no exception. The case that come with can actually store the original lens, but it won't hold together. So in about three seconds, I printed square holder that the whole thing just slides into. Problem solved. Sometimes it can be just that easy. Of course, the new tripod thread on the bottom is actually well appreciated. You can still unscrew it all and replace it with something else if you wish. When you're connecting your GoPro, you really want to make sure it's connected and you don't want anything that could be bumped or accidentally released. So. I think for the most part, when I'm attaching it to the drone and things like that, it's still going to be with the traditional mount, just so I have the confidence that uh, it's going to come back with the drone. There is a new software interface, and overall, I like what they're trying to do, but I feel like they only went halfway. It's creating a bit of a mess, well, not for the simple users who have the nice easy mode, but actually for some of the pro users and prosumer users. In contrast to what they're doing with Labs and the mobile app, where everything's in a nice simple list, and on Labs you can make QR codes and allow them to sync to the phone. So. It's a very, very strange dynamics where you need to put beta firmware on a device to make it function like it probably should out of the box. 
So I want to quickly address the battery life. What they should probably have actually said is it takes twice as long to overheat. That's actually a pretty good thing. We want the GoPros not to overheat. We want to have them run longer at high resolutions, which is great because in some of the lower recording modes, you're going to only get a small increase in battery life. They're, they're sort of cooled through radiating heat out of the body of the camera. S5 II that I'm shooting this on, it has active fans that have sort of weather sealing, but it's not going to go to 10 meters underwater. So the rule of thumb there is if you're not needing the higher quality, drag the quality down so that you can just use it the minimum you need. I won't be doing that. I'll just be buying more batteries and taking a USB battery bank. If you find this style of video useful, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah. Incremental update or revolutionary? Wrong hat.